Chum Young Foundation is one effort to address these needs. We began our work in 1987 when we noticed that many Buddhist women in the Himalayan region lacked basic education, health care. Uh, they were living very close to the edge. So we decided to see how we could help them to get access to Buddhist education, uh, to better nutrition, health care, and so forth. And in the process, we've been able to establish 15 different projects to um, provide educational opportunities. And we don't mean just Buddhist education, but also secular education, education about health care, um, also peace and conflict resolution, um, substance abuse, um, how to apply for grants from the government, all kinds of things whatever we can help facilitate. A couple of times we've had people go up and teach martial arts, for example, defense, and um, languages, English, Hindi, uh, Urdu, and, and so forth. When women don't um, have the tools to deal with government agencies, they're disadvantaged in the process of getting grants, getting the assistance that they should be getting to improve their lives. So. Uh, by now, we've started 15 projects, and a couple of these projects, they were monasteries when we began our work, but we've helped them to expand to education projects and um, also help, uh, imp help them learn administrative skills, accounting skills, and m basic um, empowerment, really. And in addition, we've helped to start three schools in Bangladesh for Buddhist indigenous people that live along the Bangladeshi-Burmese border. Now these are schools for little girls because when we first started we thought of Buddhist studies programs but the educational level of the indigenous people was not sufficient. So we decided to start from the beginning. And I think it was a good decision because basic literacy is very, very important before we go on to higher education. Now we have many, pro uh, many scholarship students who are getting higher degrees in Bangladesh, in India, and in Thailand. So this has been really wonderful. It opens up many opportunities. Learning English opens up whole new worlds of experience for these young women. And then they are able to participate in international conferences. This gives them the idea that they can also organize locally and nationally in order to learn more and to also further their own welfare, their own interests. We would like to link up Jamyang Foundation as well as Sakedita and other Buddhist women's organizations with the United Nations. What we discovered over the last year in particular as I traveled around was that Buddhist women have virtually no representation in the United Nations. How did this happen? That uh, 300 million women are unrepresented or underrepresented in this international organization. And when we say 300 million Buddhist women, that's probably an understatement. Because recently I traveled to China and people said, well, there's 300 million Buddhist women in China alone. So your figures are actually half of what is really of the population of Buddhist women globally. So we're going to have to revise our statistics upwards, I think. And that's a good thing, because then we'll be able to help more people. right? So uh, getting linked up with UN agencies will give us access to trainings, uh, healthcare training programs, children's education, uh, mother-child health, um, many different programs that we can make the most of. Uh, but we have to figure out how to get set up, linked up with these international agencies. I think the benefits can be tremendous.